Welcome, I'm Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. Rapidly becoming a global business hub, India is attracting investors from around the world. With robust advancements in sectors like IT, healthcare, renewable energy, agriculture and manufacturing, the country's economic landscape is transforming at an unprecedented pace. Foreign investments are pouring in, highlighting India's rising stature on the global stage. Join us as we unpack the strategies and stories that are shaping India's dynamic market expansion. India's growth is going to contribute almost 20-25% to global growth. And so any company, any multinational that is looking for new avenues for growth is going to be looking at investing in India. We are very really bullish about the sector. We know that the government is going to continuously invest in infrastructure development. Almost every major brand in every major country is now looking at India uh, to not only source from India, but to make India their next hub uh, for manufacturing for the world. As the global economic landscape evolves, India is emerging as a formidable player poised to reshape the dynamics of international trade and investment. With projections indicating that India could soon become the third largest global economy, the country's economic growth is capturing the attention of multinational corporations and investors worldwide. India's economic growth is not just a transient phenomenon. It represents a structural shift that positions the country as a key driver of global economic expansion. According to leading business leaders, India's contribution to global growth is expected to be between 20 to 25 percent in the coming years. This robust growth is underpinned by a combination of favorable demographics, policy reforms, and increasing domestic consumption. Everybody can see that India will become, in the next few years, the third largest uh, global economy. Uh, the growth is going to be very strong. And India's growth is going to contribute almost 20-25% to global growth. And so any company, any multinational that is looking for new avenues for growth is going to be looking at investing in India because that's one of the primary drivers of the, of the global economy in the future. India is creating a global platform, attracting investors from around the world and solidifying its position as an investment hub. Recently, an annual business summit was held in New Delhi where business leaders were gathered from across the globe and hailed India's economic progress. A two-day annual business summit was held in New Delhi where business tycoons from across the globe charted a path for India's future as a developed economy in 2047. The summit brought together esteemed government dignitaries, industry captains, entrepreneurs, influencers, startup founders, and thought leaders from India and other countries on a single platform. As India sets its sights on faster growth and rising incomes for all, leaders spoke on its progress on competitiveness, inclusiveness, innovation, globalization, and sustainability through continued policy reforms. Thanks to government's policy on uh, infrastructure development, he's having a fantastic growth. This year, the industry has grown by almost 11%, which is on top of almost 24% growth last year. I think last few years, the continuous focus that the government has given, whether it is construction of the express highways, whether it is uh, uh, airports, uh, expressways, all of these have contributed and most importantly, the focus on the rural economy has been very good, in fact, particularly for JCB. Over the years, India has strengthened its defining agenda of reforms, government policies, and initiatives that have transformed its economic development journey. Every major brand in every major country is now looking at India uh, to not only source from India, but to make India their next hub uh, for manufacturing for the world and not just for the domestic markets. Uh, so I think uh, we in the industry uh, and, and we in the country are sitting on a very large opportunity uh, and I'm sure that it's just a matter of time uh, before India does emerge as a next hub for manufacturing for the world for these product categories. One of the most significant developments in India is the shift in global manufacturing paradigms. Traditionally, countries like China have dominated the manufacturing sector. However, 
India is rapidly becoming a preferred destination for global manufacturing and sourcing. Government initiatives such as Make in India have encouraged both multinational and domestic companies to manufacture their products within India. This initiative has streamlined regulatory processes, enhanced infrastructure, and attracted substantial foreign direct investment. The ease of doing business has improved, and numerous sectors, including automotive, electronics, and textiles, are witnessing accelerated growth. As a result, Investment-friendly policies are driving job creation, fostering innovation, and positioning India as a pivotal player in the global manufacturing landscape, thereby propelling the nation's economic expansion. India boasts a rich tradition of hand-woven textiles that continues to captivate fashion enthusiasts worldwide. And today, we journey to Varanasi, a historic city in the northern Indian state of Uttar Pradesh where skilled weavers have been crafting exquisite ethnic attire for centuries. And their intricate work has captured the imagination of renowned fashion designers, making Varanasi a hub of timeless elegance. Take a look. Walking down the ramp in the historic city of Varanasi, these models are not merely showcasing ethnic attire, they are embodying India's rich heritage and artistic excellence. Renowned fashion designer Manish Malhotra orchestrated this show with the theme, Banarasi Sari, a tapestry of Indian culture and craftsmanship. Celebrating Varanasi's storied tradition of handwoven saris, meticulously crafted by local weavers. The event was graced by Bollywood stars Kriti Sanan and Ranveer Singh, who dazzled the audience in traditional Banarasi ensembles, further highlighting the timeless elegance and cultural significance of these exquisite textiles. <laughs> इनकी कला ऐसी है कि पूरे भारत को उनकी कलाकारी पर गर्व है। बनारसी साड़ी जो है वो हमारी विरासत, हमारे हेरिटेज का बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट है। तो मनीष ने ही वो बनारसी साड़ी डिजाइन की थी और आज इस शो पर बनारस में, काशी में ये आउटफिट पहनना जो मुझे लगता है कि एक ब्राइडल आउटफिट है जिस पर कोई इम्ब्रोइडरी नहीं है सब हाथ से किया हुआ बुना हुआ काम है बनारसी साड़ी और हमारी हेरिटेज जो हमारी बुनकर कम्युनिटी है जो समाज है जो वो बुनते हैं एक एक कपड़ा जो है उसे कितने दिन लगते हैं कितने प्यार से खाली पैसे के लिए नहीं दिल से किया जाता है ये काम Banarasi saris are famous for their exquisite craftsmanship and luxurious silk fabric. Known for their intricate patterns, these saris are even adorned with rich gold and silver brocade. They are especially cherished during weddings and festive occasions, embodying elegance, tradition, and cultural heritage. The weavers in and around Varanasi have preserved the tradition of handwoven saris for generations. Meet Bismillah Ansari, a fourth-generation weaver who has been creating Banarasi saris using both traditional hand looms and power looms. Hatkarga jo hai, hatkarga 4 se 5 din mein tayar hota hai saari. Ab power loom ka jo hai, wo 4 se 5 ghante mein bhi saari tayar hoti hai. Kuch saariyan aise hai ki jo 12 ghanta mein bhi tayar hoti hai, wohi power loom par. Sab ka dhaga alag alag hai. मिनिमम तीन घंटा चार घंटे की साड़ी पूछती है एक धागा अगर उसका महीन पेवर जो चलता है तो वो समझ लीजिए कि बारह घंटा रेगुलर खड़ा रहेगा आदमी तब होगा नहीं तो डेढ़ दिन लगता है एज द इंडियन टेक्सटाइल एंड अपैरल इंडस्ट्री इंट्रोड्यूस इट्स रिच क्लोदिंग लाइन टू द मार्केट इट्स ऑल्सो जेनरेटिंग टर्म्स ऑफ वेस्ट मटीरियल एंड वोली एंड टू एड्रेस दिस ग्लोबल इश्यू इंडिया इज इंक्रीजिंगली एम्ब्रेसिंग सस्टेनेबिलिटी Alongside government reforms promoting sustainable fashion and Indian textiles, many companies are diligently working towards zero waste by promoting repair and reuse. Music 
India is a major player in textiles and apparel, aiming for a 250 billion production target by 2030, while also prioritizing sustainability. Companies like Dudelage are leading the charge by upcycling and recycling old fabrics into stylish garments, gaining popularity nationwide. Co-founder Kriti Tula explains their innovative approach. When we started the label, there were hardly any um, brands sort of talking about sustainability or the fashion industry talking about sustainability in India. Uh, that is where our journey sort of started and my inspiration remains uh, my need to f create uh, products and designs that uh, reduce the impact of fashion and make sustainable fashion more accessible to a larger and a wider audience in India. The wastage that we produce is then further processed into more patchwork um, and or, or it's uh, decomposed to create paper. This innovative approach to sustainability shows that fashion can be both stylish and responsible, reducing environmental impact and setting an example for other brands. Buddhism is not just a religion, but a way of living that guides humanity towards a more compassionate and interconnected world. Today on our show, we will give you a glimpse of the recently held Vesak Purnima Divas that is celebrated across India and the world to commemorate the birth anniversary of Lord Buddha, reflecting on his teachings and the path of righteousness. Let's take a look. The diversity of India is its speciality, whether it is cultural, regional, linguistic or religious diversity. All these together make India stand out from the rest of the world. Religions play a pivotal role in guiding humanity towards a more compassionate, mindful and interconnected world. Buddhism is one such religion in the world that is striving to guide mankind with its noble thoughts and ideas to attain enlightenment in the face of contemporary challenges. Recently, to celebrate Lord Buddha's legacy, Vaisak Buddha Purnima was celebrated across India and its neighboring countries, including Nepal and Bhutan, which have a shared heritage. On this auspicious occasion, the International Buddhist Confederation organized a grand event in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture in India's capital, New Delhi. The event commenced with the lightning of lamps and the offering of flowers to Buddha, followed by religious chanting by monks. Moreover, nuns from the Jamyang Choling Institute showcased a lively Nalanda debate, followed by the screening of Buddhism-themed films and cultural programs. When Buddha Purnima is created, there is an entertainment feeling. और खुशी मनाने की भावना कम होता है तो उसमें क्या होता है कि आपको एक ऐसे आ, क्या कहते हैं पुण्य कर्म करने चाहिए जिससे कि आप पुण्य अर्जित कर पाए और पुण्य अर्जित करने के बाद उसको आप समर्पित करें पूरे जगत के आ, क्या कहते हैं शांति के लिए पूरे जगत के खुशहाली के लिए आप उसको समर्पित करें the occasion was also graced by Minakshi Lekhi, Union Minister of State for External Affairs and Culture, IBC representatives and approximately 50 monks from India and beyond. India's President Draupadi Murmu also gave a virtual address during the event. It is called the Triple Gem. This is the date on which uh, uh, Siddharth Gautama uh, actually took birth. This is the date when he got his enlightenment. This is also the date when he passed away, Mahapari Nirvana. So it's a very important uh, day in the Buddhist world. And IBC, being a Buddhist organization, has been celebrating it uh, every year. As IBC, we try to engage countries across the world. So we have more than 39 countries which are members of uh, the IBC. For instance, every moment, every activity that we undertake, 
we try to make sure that it gets spread globally to the extent possible. Buddhist communities around the world, including Nepal, observe this day with reverence and gaiety. The birth anniversary of Buddha, the apostle of non-violence and peace, is observed by conducting special prayer ceremonies at monasteries. Nearly 100 monks, half of them from the IBC, also held a special prayer for world peace in Nepal's Lumbani, the birthplace of Gautam Buddha. This land is especially blessed as Lord Buddha was born in Lumbani on the day of Vaisakh Purnima. Nearby, in the town of Bodh Gaya, he attained enlightenment and he gave his first sermon in Sarnath, again, not far from here. Finally, he attained Mahaparinirvan in Kushinagar. Lord Buddha's life journey and the dissemination of his teachings and message starting from his first sermon in Sarnath, form an enduring and unparalleled bond between India and Nepal that adds to our unique relationship and symbolizes our shared heritage and values. The teachings of Buddhism not only inspire one to follow the path of righteousness, but also give a huge perspective on life and make life easier through its eight pole practices, including right intention, right livelihood, and right effort to attain nirvana, which is enlightenment. Moreover, it also fosters a sense of selflessness and kindness towards mankind, which can make the world a better place to live in. Now let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. From the waste hotel kitchens to local farms, a UAE-based company is gathering food waste and transforming it into compost in a country where growing food on sandy soils is a challenge. Launched in 2021, Reloop, a circular economy digital platform, helps industry in the UAE to divert their food waste away from landfills. The co-founder of Reloop, Yusuf Chahade, adds that more than 100 hotels and restaurants are contributing the food waste to Reloop so far. In 2023, the UAE announced an action plan to reduce food loss and waste in the country by 50% by 2030 by creating new social norms, scaling best practices and enabling policies across the entire food ecosystem. According to 2011 census, India has 26.8 million persons with disabilities making up 2.21% of the total population. In the past, people with disabilities did not receive the rights they deserved. However, times have changed and they are now referred to as Divyang, highlighting their divine abilities and earning the respect they deserve. Divyang individuals are making significant contributions in arts, sports, business and more. So let's take a look and meet some of these inspiring Divyangs. Passion makes every path easier. An example of this is 47-year-old Poonam Rai from Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh. After a spinal fracture left her bedridden for 17 years, she began walking again with the help of a walker and impressed everyone with her painting skills. In recent years, Poonam has created magnificent paintings, showcasing her talent nationwide and earning several prestigious awards. She also runs an NGO where she teaches art to children, empowering them as well. और मैंने 2018 में longest live painting marathon का record की, जो कि मनाली में जाके 50 feet के canvas को create किया, जो कि world record India में नाम उसका दर्ज है। और इसी तरह से मैंने अभी हाल ही में uh, Ramji ki painting ko 22022 chawal ke dane se usko create kiya usme hamari ek choti bahan hai Priya Singh 
जिन्होंने मेरा बहुत सहयोग दिया और हम दोनों ने मिलकर इस कार्य को किया और ऐसा लगता है कि आप रिकॉर्ड बना रहे हैं उन बच्चों के लिए आपने क्या किया जीवन में तो सब कोई अपने लिए जीता है लेकिन मेरा ये मानना है कि जब आप दूसरों के लिए कुछ करते हो ना तभी आपका जीवन सार्थक होता है तो मैंने अपने संस्था से हजारों बच्चों को मैंने रिकॉर्ड होल्डर बनाया जस्टिस पूनम राय सेट एन एग्जाम्पल इन दील्ड ऑफ आर्ट सिक्सटीन ईयर ओल्ड शीतल देवी फ्रॉम जम्मू हैज मेड दी इंटायर कंट्री प्राउड इन द फील्ड ऑफ स्पोर्ट्स शीतल इज एन आर्चर हु हैज नो हैंड्स बट शी नेवर कंसिडर्ड हर डिसबिलिटी अ कर्स She made history by winning two gold medals and a total of three medals for India at the 2023 Asian Para Games. So far, Sheetal has won a total of 7 medals for India. Recently, she was honored with the Arjuna Award, the second highest sporting honor of India, for her outstanding performance and contribution. Sheetal's journey was not easy, but with her hard work, dedication, and determination, she has reached the pinnacle of success today. मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा यहाँ तक मैंने अपने देश को साथ मेडल दे चुकी हूँ तो मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा और कोशिश करती हूँ ऐसे ही आगे भी मेडल देते रहूँ बस हमारे कोच भी अच्छे सिखाते रहते हैं और वक्त वक्त पे हमें शाइन बोर्ड का भी सपोर्ट मिलता रहता है जो हमें चाहिए वो देते रहते हैं तो हमें बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है लाइक पूनम एंड शीतल अदर स्पेशली एबल पीपल इन इंडिया आर बिकमिंग इंक्रीजिंगली सेल्फ रिलायंट टू एड्रेस एनी इशूज दे मे फेस द गवर्नमेंट इन फैक्ट हैज टेकन सेवरल सिग्निफिकेंट स्टेप्स The Accessible India campaign is improving the lives of specially abled people by creating a barrier-free environment in public places across the country. For instance, many physically disabled people visit railway stations daily. The campaign is providing divyang-friendly facilities at these stations, including lifts, escalators, ramps, braille signage, special parking, and toilets. Similar facilities are being made available at airports, on buses, and in government buildings as well. To increase Divyang participation, the government passed the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016. This act expanded the categories of disabilities from 7 to 21 and increased the reservation for Divyang people in education and jobs from 3% to 4%. Okay, ye janker और देखकर बहुत खुशी होती है पिछले कुछ वर्षों में दिव्यांगजनों के प्रति समाज के दृष्टिकोण में बदलाव आया है और उनकी उपलब्धियों में सराहनीय वृद्धि हुई है इसके लिए मैं सभी स्टेक होल्डर्स को बहुत बहुत बधाई देती हूँ स्पेशली एबल्ड पीपल आर नाउ पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन सोसाइटी जस्ट लाइक एनी अदर सिटीजन With the changing mindset of society and with the support of the government, the path for Divyang people is gradually becoming smoother, benefiting the country as a whole. In India, forts and heritage buildings are being transformed into luxury hotels, blending historical grandeur with modern amenities. And this trend preserves cultural heritage while offering at the same time unique, opulent experiences to guests. thereby driving tourism and providing sustainable economic benefits to local communities we visited nimrana fort in rajasthan to experience this first hand take a look nestled amid the stunning aravalli hills Nimrana Fort Palace dates back to the 15th century and was built by Prithviraj Chauhan of the Chauhan dynasty. Recognizing its historical and architectural significance, historians and architects led by Nimrana Hotels Group chairman Aman Nath restored the fort in 1986, transformed into a heritage hotel. Nimrana Fort Palace now invites guests to relish in its captivating charm and ancient marvels, revitalizing this historic site while also preserving its cultural heritage. 
I think that um, heritage is a big strength of India, because when we have a civilization which is 5,000, 7,000 years old, which other countries don't have, so now that we are respecting our heritage, so everybody will come to see that. So that is our USP or unique selling proposition. And uh, luxury also has many different uh, definitions. You know, luxury can only be $1,000 and you're, you know, do all that. But Nimrana is experiential luxury. And you have everything, but you have the beauty of an experience which is unique and which you can't have elsewhere. So that, I think, is a, should be the fastest growing sector. Why would people come to see India's cities or its high-rise buildings? That is very much wanted because it's development. But with heritage tourism, the good thing that's going to happen is that these heritage properties are in rural areas, in far-flung places. At Nimrana Fort Palace, guests experience Rajasthan's royal heritage with modern conveniences. Luxurious rooms like Maharaja and Maharani suites, duplex suites and heritage rooms offer grandeur and sophistication, equipped with amenities like private jacuzzis, swings and royal beds. Guests can also savor authentic Rajasthani cuisine amidst the regal ambience. It's such a memorable experience always, the architecture, the rooms, the names of the rooms. I remember last time when I was a kid, I stayed at Badal Mahal and it was a big impact on me just because the room was blue, it had clouds, it's just the theme is so special and you wake up and there's peacocks singing and then you go for a swim, the peacocks are right there, Kabutar is like a drinking the water from the pool, it's just, it's so different, it's such a unique special experience. I love travelling. And I especially love traveling to heritage places. Whenever I'm traveling to a new place, I always look whether there is a heritage property there or not. Because the charm of a heritage property far outweighs a new property which is there. New pro properties generally don't have any character. But heritage properties have so much character really as such. They, they evoke history. And I always love going to such places. Nimrana Fort Palace stands as a prime example of adaptive reuse, preserving history while offering modern luxury. In addition to its exquisite carvings, the fort contains other historic structures such as Suraj Kund, Jal Mahal, and Nikam Mahal Palace. In terms of services, we have fooding, lodging, हमारे पास में spa services हैं, recreational activities हैं, recreational activities में हमारे पास में camel cart है, camel ride है, vintage ride है। The preservation of ancient architecture through adaptive reuse of historic structures showcases Rajasthan's commitment to its rich cultural heritage, providing modern comforts amidst historical splendor. Nimrana Fort Palace exemplifies the preservation of heritage through luxury tourism, blending history with modern opulence. With that, it's a wrap on today's episode, but we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.